It all began with 9-11. A man living in a cave in Afghanistan, supposedly outfoxed 16 U.S. intelligence agencies. But architects and engineers tells us 9-11 was an inside job. Now we've got Osama bin Putin, and the lies keep pouring in. First we got the lie that Yanukovych was firing on protesters from the rooftops at Maidan. But it was right sector snipers, enablers of DC's coup-imposed regime, who shot at the crowd. Jewish neocon Victoria Nuland of FEU fame was nailed by Rep Rohrbacher as queen of the lie. First of all, the vast majority of those who participated on the Maidan were peaceful protesters. Uh, if you yes. had a chance to see the pictures, some, many of us visited, including many members here. Mm. There were mothers and grandmothers and yeah. veterans. Let me and note every, that I have a, however, I saw, uh, however, before, before you go on, I saw those pictures as well. I also saw a lot of pictures of people throwing firebombs at groups of policemen who are huddled in the, over in a corner where people are shooting into the ranks of police. So yes, there were mothers with flowers, but there were also very dangerous street fighters who were engaged in those demonstrations. The question is, were there neo-Nazi groups involved in that? There were, as I said, almost every color of Ukraine was represented, including some, the ugly, including so the some is, ugly colors. The answer is yes, then. Next lie. We're told that Yanukovych fled office. Not so. He was forced out of office by Newland's right sector thugs. And did the chaos that we see begin? It would begin when an elected president of Ukraine, who was uh, probably elected in the fairest and, and uh, most honest election Ukraine has ever had, when that president, Yanukovych, was forced out of office by street violence. Why well, number three. We're being told that Putin is a bully by the Jews on Capitol Hill. What we're doing this morning is standing up to a bully and telling him that uh, his actions will not stand. What we're doing is saying that in the 21st century, it is no longer acceptable for dictators to invade other countries. That's a laugh. The entire world despises Jumerica for its invasion of Iraq, Afghanistan, Libya, and now a DC-enabled coup in Ukraine. May the real bully please stand up. Lie after lie after lie in making the world safe for democracy, by which the U.S. murdered countless civilians in Iraq and Afghanistan. We're told that America supports the right of self-determination. Really? We supported the independence of South Sudan and accepted the independence of Eritrea. In Europe, we supported the independence of each of the republics of the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics. We supported the independence of each of the republics of the Federation of Yugoslavia. Uh, we created the independence of Kosovo. Um, on the other hand, we oppose the independence of northern Kosovo we oppose the uh, independence of the Krajina region of uh, Croatia, which was inhabited by Serbs. We oppose the independence of Abkhazia and South Ossetia, and we, of course, oppose the independence uh, or any other action with Crimea. Seems kind of haphazard. Um, in Moscow, they note that although I've identified like 30 different decisions we've had to make in Europe that seem haphazard, Every single one of those decisions is the anti-Moscow decision. What are our policies? When are we in favor of territorial integrity? When are we in favor of self-determination? Is, is it haphazard, Ambassador? In keeping with the UN Charter, the United States and our European allies and most civilized nations on the planet oppose the changing of borders by force. And that's what happened in Crimea. You wretched liar. You were the one who sponsored the coup-imposed regime in Kiev by force in the first place. There was an international monitoring group in Crimea who affirmed that the landslide vote to join Russia was voluntary, not by force. Last lie. We're told that our economy is recovering. Just ask America's 102 million jobless. 
while they can't find jobs, we're blowing money for yet another war for the Jews. Ambassador Newland, uh, so what, what's the bottom line for the cost of all of this to the United States? We're at 187 million, which is about where we've been in support for Ukraine over the last five years. We've increased it by another 50 well, million, and then the program, loan guarantee. But it's 187 million. 187 million plus 50. Uh, which was appropriated on April 1st. Okay. Uh, 18 million from the defense budget for okay. security services and border guards. Okay, so we're, we've spent about uh, 200 million and we've got uh, 400 million um, that the, we've scored for the guaranteeing of that loan. Which will come back to the U.S. Treasury in, when the loan is paid back, as you know. Right, when the loan is paid back. With interest. Right, shall we all hold our breath for that? Never will be paid back. The real payback, I mean payoff, is to the mass of Jewish hacks and all of their Gentile shills promoting what's good for the Jews on Capitol Hill. And we all know what's good for the Jews is bad for everyone else.